today's the day. I'm driving about two and a half hours west of where I live to the western part of North Carolina in what will be the first time that we have the JKU off-road. I am riding with my son today and we're also meeting someone else at the start of the trail but we have a long drive so I'll tell you about who we're meeting up with when we get there. Hey Russ, I am comms up. This is my own uh, radio and just wanted to thank you again for uh, for leading us out here today. No worries, let's nice ride. 10 four. Here's a quick tip if you're headed to the Shelton Laurel Trail from Interstate 40 West. If you decide to go past exit 15, which leads to the start of the trail, to go to the rest area a few miles further on Interstate 40, plan an extra 30 minutes to get back to exit 15. Leaving the rest area, you have to get back on 40 West and go several miles into Tennessee before you can make a U-turn and head back to the exit for the trail. Anyway, I had hoped to film a short intro at the start of the trail, but since we arrived late, we said a quick hello to our Western North Carolina Jeep Trail expert and then got started on our first of two trails for the day. We were fortunate to have Russ from the YouTube channel Adventurous take some time out of his schedule to ride along with us on this shakedown run. As other than putting our new rig in four high on pavement, we hadn't tested its capabilities yet, so we really didn't know what to expect. And we were beyond happy to have Russ with us as backup. If you're not familiar with this channel, I'll put a link to it in the description below. But he has a very well-built and extremely capable Jeep that he has off-roaded in some awesome locations across the country. There you go. And the information he shares on his channel is always spot on. And he's also done several really great interviews with other great uh, off-road content creators. So definitely highly recommend checking out his channel. When you look at that in slow motion, you can see that we missed an opportunity to test out the electronic sway bar disconnect. We previously wheeled a Sahara that didn't have a sway bar disconnect, so having one and really remembering to use it is something we're going to have to get used to. An interesting stop along the way on the Shelton Laurel Trail is an abandoned mica mine. According to a North Carolina Geological Survey report from 1992, commercial mining for sheet mica started in North Carolina in 1867, with Haywood County where this abandoned mine is located as one of the first two counties where mica was first mined in the state. The report notes that there were a total of 27 mica mines in Haywood County. Between 1930 and 1959, North Carolina was the leading sheet mica producer in the nation. However, the need for sheet mica rapidly declined starting in 1962, and no North Carolina sheet mica mines are still active. Early uses of sheet mica included electrical applications, vacuum tubes, and capacitors. Only a couple of miles long, this trail was a great warm-up for the goat trail, which we would do next. If you're in western North Carolina near the Tennessee border, it's a quick, fun trail to try out, and it makes a great addition when you include it in a loop with some of the other trails in the area. It was a good trail to start on for our shakedown, 
and we're happy with the way our Jeep performed with its stock suspension and 32 inch tires. Even though we've wheeled the Jeep with a lift and bigger tires, we're not rushing to do the exact same thing with this rig. This is something I would recommend to everyone when you're starting a new project. Test it out in its stock form before you make a bunch of changes and spend a bunch of money on something you may not have needed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the trail in part two of our shakedown on the goat trail uh, coming soon. And huge thanks again to Russ for leading us out on this uh, great Sunday afternoon ride.